Welcome back to Upon Further Review here inside the Raiders Podcast Studios, brought to you by Coors Light, and we're here with Raider legend, former Raider linebacker, Matt Millen. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, so far so good. Yes, yes, not, yes. Not dead yet. That's good. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, being out there on the grass and being out there on the blacktop, it, it got pretty hot pretty quick. It is very deceptive. Yes. Yeah, it's the biggest deception. Yeah, no, it is. It's warm fast. I thought that, hey, man, I got shorts on today. It's not going to be too bad. And then all of a sudden it just it crept up, and I thought, okay, it's pretty hot. Let me go inside to the studio. So I'm glad that you're able to join us here in the studio. And you're here with uh, a bunch of the legends. And, you know, the Raiders, they always pride in, in the alumni and, and, the you know, how much the alumni means to the silver and black. What does it mean for you to be able to come back each and every year and even just observe OTAs like today? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, but for me, I mean, it's enjoyable because it gives you – lets you become – kind of part of the thread of the of the organization and so you also you know have a chance to speak to the younger players get to know the younger players and they're all younger at this point <laughs> and so um it's it's just you know it's good to stay in touch what is it when you're out there observing? I know what I'm kind of looking for. I'm looking for attendance. I'm looking for, you know, size of guys, see if they bulked up from a year ago, seeing if there's, you know, look like the drills are going pretty smoothly. But from your standpoint, what are you looking for when you're out there? So in, in these situations, in these settings, you're looking for skill sets mm-hmm. and can they be demonstrated against competition? But it's not hard competition. You know, right. You're running around in your shorts. Right. So it's not like you're hitting anybody. So really what you're looking for is you don't want to see guys make mental mistakes. Mm-hmm. You want to see guys be right with their footwork. You want to see guys get their hand placement and all that kind of stuff. And then even if you're not, if you're a rookie and you're doing this stuff, you're, you're still trying to figure it out. So it's just really getting everybody there and then getting a feel for what kind of team you're going to have. Right. Because inevitably uh, what it comes down to is, is the group has to gel. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't gel, you don't have a chance. And if it does gel, you got a shot. How much? How important is that right now? Oh, gelling. Dude. I mean, even though there's 90 guys, but how important is it to start gelling right now? Yeah. So you're going into the into this uh, into the schedule here, thinking, you know, who your guys are going to be, you hope to be. And there's some going to be. There's obviously going to be some guys that are going to surprise you, and you think, hey, we got one. Right. And so what you really want to see is your core group develop, and you don't win a championship without the locker room being right. Mm-hmm. You can't have guys who don't love football. You can't have guys who don't try to give it their all or who have some kind of pride or a chip on their shoulder right. to try to prove to you. I mean, if you have that element, you got a real chance. Because generally what ends up happening in the league is you – it's not that you win games, you lose games. Mm-hmm. So you make more mistakes. Right. So the, the idea is not to make as many mistakes as the other team while still trying to maintain a high level of play. And so the guys who make – Fewer mistakes are guys who are smart, mm-hmm. are guys who it means something to, and then they put the work into it. That's and something that Coach McDaniels just told us a little while ago, that that's what he's looking for, especially in the, in the rookies. You know, I asked him about Aiden O'Connell. He said, hey, he's swimming right now, right. but he's smart. You know, he loves football, and, and he's out here. And, and, again, these are OTAs that are voluntary, so it shows that you love football when you're out here working. Well, if you're a rookie and you're not here, <laughs> right. you got, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I but I, I had a lot of Aiden's games in college. Mm-hmm. He was at Purdue, and, and so he's, he has the skill set to be able to, to stick, right? Mm-hmm. And so he – he can throw a long ball, but with the state of their offensive line at Purdue, he was getting rid of the ball pretty quick. Right. So he had to see things fast. He had to recognize things fast. They played a lot of man against him to try to take things away, and he was accurate with the football. And so all those things are going to be a plus for him. Talking again with uh, former Raider, the great Matt Millen, here with us on the Palm Further Review, brought to you by Coors Light. Uh, one of the things I noticed about Aiden O'Connell and, and something that Dave Ziegler's pointed out and Josh McDaniels is that they like guys that have been through some things and, and yeah. some deal, dealt with some adversity. He walked on at Purdue, you yep. know, he, he had to fight his way up the depth chart, and now, you know, he was a fourth round pick. So a guy like that, I feel like he's going to come out here with a lot to prove. Yeah, and he's that kind of kid anyway. And he had some, he had some family problems. Uh, uh, somebody, one of his family members, died last year, and I had mm-hmm. that game actually and he played through it and so you know he's he's been through the ringer a little bit and so he gets it and you like to see that right and because even with all those things on him all the emotional stress and all that kind of stuff he still he still played well right and that's that's really important and again he's building that right now and he's getting a lot of reps we know Jimmy Garoppolo still you know rehabbing right now so uh, it, it's almost one of those things where I feel like he's 
able to take advantage of reps that he might not be getting as many of if Jimmy was healthy right now. Yeah, I mean, all the quarterbacks. Right. I mean, Hoyer, it's the same thing. So yeah. you have to take advantage when you get it. Mm-hmm. And you never know when it's going to happen, right? So right now he has an opportunity, so you take advantage of it as much as you can. Right. There's there's no doubt about it. Again, Matt Millen is with us here. And so, again, just being out there with your alumni brother, you know, how, how is that? I mean, knowing that you guys worked really hard and built some really, really great Raider teams, how, how, how much fun is that to be back with them? Yeah, that's interesting. We had a great talk uh, with uh, Dave Ziegler this morning, and um, one of the things we were talking about, it's like all those guys in there that you look at now and were are great, like Art Show. Yeah. Great, and we're, mm-hmm. great legend, right? And, uh, you know, there's guys like that. So Art showed up here at the Raiders, and he wasn't a legend. Mm-hmm. He was just a rookie. Right. And he had to learn. And he learned from the guys before him. And then Art, when I got here, Art took me under his wing with Gene Upshaw, and that's how I learned what a Raider is. Mm-hmm. And I think in the league right now, that's hard to do mm-hmm. because rosters get turned over so fast and free agency guys leave fast. They're here for two years and they're gone. Right. And you really it's hard to build a core. And so I think that's one of the things that the Raiders are trying to do right now. And um, and I, I hope that it takes. But for us, it was a different experience than than the way football is right now. You know, you mentioned building that core, and Dave Ziegler's told me and told mother, many others that, you know, he's trying to build this team through the draft. How important is that? As you've been in that position, Huge. how important is that to be able to hit on, on more of your draft picks? So we used to say, now you're talking, this is 20 years ago. Right. Well, so we used to say, if we hit on five picks, okay. we're good. Mm-hmm. That's a good draft. I think today it's probably more like three. Yeah. And it's... And if you get a free agent someplace, uh, you know, undrafted free agent, mm-hmm. or if you get a late round pick that can play, right. that's a that's a bonus. So you're really looking at those first three guys that have to contribute, and then the rest of your team is made up of uh, free agents, right? And and that's a whole new world that we that didn't exist when I played, right? And so um, it's different because every year it's a new makeup. Mm-hmm. That's why maintaining a core is so important. Well, they maintain Max Crosby. They extended him to. last season, and he is one of those leaders. You mentioned you know, uh, Art Shell taking you under his wing. He's mentioned he wants to take Tyree Wilson under his wing. Right. He wants to help those defensive guys blend and gel, and, and he wants to be that leader. How important is it to have that leader like he does in Max Crosby? Huge. I mean, you, you can't overstate how important that it is. Mm-hmm. I, my, my guess and my gut is Josh Jacobs is another one of those guys. Right. So I would – I would like to get him signed. Yeah. So I just think that um, there are some guys that are just natural leaders. Mm-hmm. There's some guys who are thrust into that leadership position based on how they're playing. But some guys, they don't like it. Mm-hmm. They, they're not, they don't really want to be that guy. They, they like playing at a high level, mm-hmm. but let that to somebody else. And there are some guys that are just natural born. They walk in, they, they just take over. That's right. just their personality. When you have one of them... And he can play, you you need to hold on to it because they're really hard to find. Is Max Crosby not the definition of a Raider? When you see him, yeah. I mean, you know what a Raider looks like. Yeah. He, to me, seems he's like he's a new Raider because we didn't have all those tats back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> well, he's, he's a fun Raider, right? Yeah. He's, he's representing the organization, and he wants to win. You know, you talk about guys with edges and chips on their shoulder. I mean, the guy was a fourth-round pick, right? right? They told That's him good. he had to get size. You got right. to get bigger. That's the only way you're going to be able to play. And he went Skinny out and got double-digit di- yeah, double <laughs> sacks. And but, so if I'm his teammate, I keep reminding him of that. Right. You want you want to keep, keep him on edge. Oh yeah. So yeah. Howie was like that. Mm-hmm. Howard Matthew Moses Long, great <laughs> player. I mean, great player. Howie never thought he was good enough to stick. Mm-hmm. So I always reminded him every year. Right. Hey, don't forget you're you're a stiff, right? You, <laughs> You're not that good. And the great ones do that, right? The great yeah. ones continue to find ways to push themselves, yep. or like you said, have teammates out to push them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so I mean, and it's all you know. It's he loved the game. Mm-hmm. Max loves the game. There are guys. When you have those guys, you got to hold on to them. Right. But you also have to have relationships on the team, like that. Like you know, I still call Howie and I tell him, "Hey, you're not that good. You know that." Right? <laughs> and so, you're the only one that can get away with that. <laughs> no, no, no. Howard Matthew Moses, man, he was, he was a guy who he was really, he looked hard at himself every yeah. game. You That's know, if good. He got blocked one time. All I had to do was remind him of it right. all week long. <laughs> That's awesome. That's all. I, I I want to run into him and be like, Howie, 
you know you weren't really that good. And then just get out the way, right? <laughs> He's going to be like, wait, hold on. Who are you telling me? No, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do that. But he might say, you talked to Bill and didn't you? Right, right. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, you've been in front offices. You know what building these teams are about. How, I don't want to say stressful, but how is it this time of year, especially at June 1st? I mean, there's June 1st cuts. There's all kind of stuff that goes into building a roster. Yeah, so it's you have, a, you have your system down. Mm-hmm. You have to be on the same page with your head coach. So Dave is doing – Dave, if he's doing his job right, mm-hmm. which I know he is, right. um, he and the head coach have got to be on the same page. They have to be in, in step. And inevitably, you're really relying more on your head coach than – than you as a GM, right? You'll give him his your opinion. You both will share those opinions, and then, you know, if he says, "Look, I like this guy better," mm-hmm. I'm not going to take the guy he doesn't like. You right. got to take the guy he likes, or you're not going to play him. I've mm-hmm. I've watched that happen before. Yeah, and so, you you just have to really both of you have to see the same things, have the same eyes, un- understand how you want to use the guy. How does he fit in our system? And then no use getting a guy who doesn't work in your system or can't do what you're asking him to do. And so you just um, – it, it's just – pretty much a complete piece of it, and then you, you get on the same page and it'll work. Well, I'll tell you, I saw Dave Ziegler uh, walking around the fields, you know, talking to the guys. He's always in a good good mood, spirit-wise, you know, just looks like he's so into what he's doing. I'm sure that talent evaluation is a lot of fun. Matt, I'll tell you, you I think you're in midseason form. You ready to go call some games, or, you know, you still, you want to enjoy this. I know you want to enjoy the summer, but it's like you're ready to go call some games. No, I think I might have to go get my back surgery. <laughs> Well, we don't. We Back want is killing me. Oh well, we're gonna make sure that you're okay. What What do you got coming up next? I mean, what What are you guys on the agenda today? You just kind of floating around with the fellas and just yeah, observing that. And you know, you can't understate that. That's it's so good to see guys. Yeah. You know, and there's and there's so many different guys that from different eras. It's interesting though because because we all came through the Raider organization, and we were heavily influenced by Al, mm-hmm. right? And so. Um, when you see that, we know what you've been through. We understand how you were coached. We understand, and all the guys here all won Super Bowls. And so you have something to go back to. So it's it's pretty good. Well, I'll tell you what, it's good to see you guys all out there. And Sometimes I get caught up just kind of watching, observing, and seeing all the greats walking and talking. And uh, it's always great to be able to catch up with you. Thanks for, for spending some time with us today. Uh, not a problem at all. Thank you very much. Appreciate you.